Good afternoon, Chain Breakers. Coming to you with another message, another devotional. But before I get started, I'm going to ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about something uh, really special. I want to talk to you about a topic or from the standpoint of how do I beat this sin? How do I beat this sin? I know, you know, some of you, maybe you're struggling with a specific sin. Uh, maybe you're going through a pattern right now where um, you, there's a specific sin in your life that you can't beat, or maybe there's a few, and maybe you've been in this cycle of sin, and, or maybe you've been battling something your entire life, and you want to know, how do I beat this sin? So today, I want to help you with that. Uh, I want to read a verse to you uh, coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. It says that godly sorrow produces repentance, which leads to salvation with no regret. Godly sorrow produces repentance, which leads to salvation with no regret. Now, let me give you some context on what's going on in this verse. Uh, Paul is writing his letter to the Corinthian church, and uh, this is 2 Corinthians. And in chapter 5, he, <clears throat> he addresses an issue that he wrote in one of his previous letters. And I'm paraphrasing, and he tells them in one of my previous letters, I know I came at y'all kind of hard about something, but I don't regret it, although I first regretted it because it grieved you. But now I have joy that it grieved you because it led to repentance. So Paul is telling them, look, I know I confronted y'all kind of hard last time, but I'm happy I did it because it led you to repent. And then he goes on to say that godly sorrow or godly grief produces repentance, which leads to salvation. So, um, what I want you to understand in this text is that, number one, Paul shows us that sometimes confrontation is necessary in order to help us repent, but also that godly grief is necessary. We need pain, we need grief, we need confrontation in order to lead us to repentance sometimes. So that sin that you're struggling with, uh, the, the one that nobody knows about, or even the blatant ones that everyone knows about, the stuff that you feel like you cannot stop doing, whether it's masturbation, porn, cursing, smoking, uh, sexual sin, fornication, whatever it is, homosexuality, whatever it is, whatever it is that you feel like, I cannot defeat this. It's godly grief, which leads to repentance. So if you want to put an end to this cycle, if you want to stop doing these things, you're going to have to go through some godly grief. And there's a difference between godly sorrow or godly grief and worldly grief. You see, because the second half of that verse in verse 10, it says that it, it talks about worldly grief and how that leads to more sin and regret. And I need you to understand the difference between godly grief and worldly grief because worldly grief is when you kind of tend to beat yourself up worldly grief causes shame guilt you, you start to forget who you are in christ and you kind of start to give up and start living from a defeated mindset you know let's say someone is struggling with porn and and maybe they slipped up last night worldly grief will say ah man i messed up last night I might as well just keep messing up for the next two weeks. I might as well just keep, I mean, I already messed up anyway. Or, or worldly grief will, or worldly sorrow will make you start to feel like, you know, there's no point in even trying. Like, this is not something I'll ever beat. I'm, I'm human. I'm always going to struggle with this. I'm a slave to this. That's what worldly grief will lead you to believe. And worldly grief always leads to more sin. Worldly sorrow always leads to more sin. But godly sorrow, godly sorrow will, will say something like, you know what, I messed up last night, but I'm going to try my best not to do it again. And if I do it again, I'm going to get back up and try again. Godly sorrow says, 
man, I really feel bad that I did this sin, but I'm, I'm not going to stay here. You know, this sin, it, it hurts me that I hurt God and I have to stop doing this. What I'm doing is breaking the heart of God and I want to stop this. Godly sorrow usually, it always, godly grief always leads to repentance. Because what happens when you have godly grief, you start to feel bad about your sin because you know that you're breaking God's heart. So it makes you feel bad. And now you want to change. You see, as I studied this text, I looked in the Greek Bible, I looked at a Greek text analysis, and the word used for grief is lupe, which means pain, grief, sorrow, affliction, which shows that godly sorrow, godly pain, godly affliction leads to repentance. So you're going to have to feel some remorse about your sin. You're going to have to feel some pain behind your sin. It needs, to, it needs to break your heart just like it breaks God's heart because that's what's going to make you stop doing it. If you don't feel bad about your sin, you're going to get comfortable and you're going to keep on doing it. You need to feel bad about it. And that's why Paul tells him, he tells him, look, I don't regret that I came at y'all like that because Although I might have hurt y'all feelings or I might have made y'all mad, it made you repent because you felt remorse about what you did. And that's the same thing God wants for you. He wants you to feel bad about your sin. Because, listen, for those of you who don't feel bad about your sin, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to keep doing it. You're going to get you're going to get stuck in this cycle of, you know what, I'm a sin. I might feel a little bad about it, but I'm going to ask God for forgiveness and I'm going to receive forgiveness and I'm good. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have this cycle where you're just doing it until you start to feel bad about what you're doing. Look at the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he does not repent until he starts to feel bad about what happens. Matter of fact, so the prodigal son, after he blows all his money and does all these terrible things, he goes through a famine and he goes through poverty and he gets to a point where he's about to eat pig food. And then after all of that, he starts to feel bad. He starts to realize, you know what? I really messed up. Like my father was right this whole time. He gets, he starts to feel so bad about the things he's done that he even goes as far as to say, I'm unworthy to be called my father's son. And then he repents after all of that, but he, had to go through some godly sorrow. So there were some things that had to take place in his heart. He had to feel remorseful. He had to feel afflicted. He had to feel pain and he had to go through some things. And when he started to feel bad about it, then he repented. Look at David. David commits adultery and murder. And for, for a good little while, he just chilling. Like he's not even... For like a, almost a whole year, like he's just chilling. But then God uses Nathan to confront him. And when Nathan comes to him, he gets exposed. Nathan prophesies that you're going to lose your child and, and really that you're going to lose two more children and that like somebody's going to sleep with your wives too. Like he goes through all of this and then the weight of his sin hits him. And then he starts to feel bad about what he did. He starts to realize, dang, I really messed up. Like I killed a man. I, I committed, I, I cheat, I committed adultery. And he writes a whole psalm, Psalm 51. And when you read Psalm 51, you really start to see how bad he feels about his sin. Like, but that shows you is godly sorrow, which leads to repentance. These men of God, without this remorse, without this godly sorrow in their hearts they would not have repented. And the same goes for you. If you're not feeling bad about your sin, you're gonna keep doing it. So what you need to do is you need to pray for some godly sorrow. You need to ask God to give you some godly sorrow so that you can start to feel bad about your sin. And listen, God will answer. 
God will give, if you ask for godly sorrow, he will give it to you. And understand that it can come in many different forms. It might come in the form of a friend or mentor who's willing to challenge you and tell you some stuff you don't want to hear. If they hurt your feelings, it's all right if it leads to repentance. If they make you mad, it's okay if it leads to repentance. So be prepared. God might send somebody to check you. Matter of fact, God might check you himself. Sometimes when you're talking, when you're praying, and you're talking to the Holy Spirit, don't be surprised the Holy Spirit tells you, look, man, you was tripping, or you need to stop doing this. Or if the Holy Spirit starts convicting you, making your heart beat real fast, or making you start to feel sick to your stomach about the stuff you're doing. God has a multitude of different ways to give us godly grief. And it's, it's two things that I need you to understand about godly grief. Number one, you have to feel remorse. And number two, you got to go through some stuff. Like there might be some times where you have to cry your eyes out about your sin. Like I'm talking about like crying all night, Lord, why do I keep struggling with this sin? What is it going to take for me to get rid of this? Lord, I need you. There are going to be some times where this fight has to get bloody, where this war has to get bloody. We are in a spiritual war. And I'm telling you, when it comes to defeating curses and, and, and breaking cycles, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be easy. And you're going to have to go through some godly sorrow. Ask God to send you some godly sorrow. Ask him. I guarantee he'll give it to you. I want to share something with y'all. And um, uh, some people know, you know, I've had this lifelong battle against masturbation since I was a teenager. And I've watched God set me free more than once. And there was one time in particular where I was, there was one time in particular in 2021 where I had been masturbating and I, I actually, I wasn't even watching porn. I was only masturbating to pictures of my wife. And, you know, the Lord still showed me that it was wrong. It was, he, he told me that's a perversion. And I noticed because this is around the time where I really, really, really started getting super close to God. I mean, like inseparable. I could hear his voice more clearly than ever. And I would notice that every time I would masturbate, the intimacy would be affected. I noticed it. I would still be covered in his love and grace. We still had a relationship. But the intimacy was definitely affected. I noticed that. I noticed that the intimacy was affected whenever I would masturbate. So what ended up happening was, you know, after a while, you know, I was getting so close to God, I started feeling like, man, like, I don't want to keep affecting our intimacy. If, if every time I do this, it's going to affect our intimacy, I don't want to do this against you. Because I noticed, like, this is breaking God's heart. And if it's breaking his heart like this to the point where it's affecting our intimacy, I can't keep doing this. And I started being so aware of the fact that I was breaking his heart that it, it, it started breaking my heart. You know, I was like, I got to stop this. And what ended up happening was because I was so remorseful about the fact that I was breaking God's heart, it caused me to want to stop. So I would go longer and longer without doing it. And every time I would do it, it would break my heart again. Like, man, I messed up. I'm sorry, Lord. I really don't want to keep hurting you like this. And over time, I would go longer and longer without doing it. Next thing I knew, I was free. I mean, delivered. I mean, did not struggle with it at all. And even when I was tempted, I would be reminded, no, nah, I don't want to hurt God like this. Me and him too cool. I mean, just think of when you're in a relationship with somebody. Think about a friendship or a romantic relationship 
when you really love somebody, you like, you know what, I don't really want to hurt them like that. I'm not going to do that. Maybe your spouse, I'm not going to cheat on her like that. I'm not going to cheat on on my on, on him like that if you're if you're a woman. Um maybe you're thinking like, I'm not gonna hurt my partner like that. Well, that's the same way I felt about God. And that's the same way you need to feel about God. I cannot keep hurting him like this. So Lord, whatever I gotta go through, I'm willing to go through it. Lord, whatever remorse I need to feel, I'm willing to feel it. Lord, give me some godly sorrow. 